So, do you need a child theme in order to customize WooCommerce? Well, the answer is no, you don't. However, five minutes of extra work can give you a lot of benefits. First of all, before moving on to the child theme, however, I want to uh, learn what's the difference between CSS and PHP. This will come very useful later on. Now, if you're looking to customize the border, the background, the color of something, then you're looking into style, which means that's CSS and it goes into the style.css file of your child theme. On the other end, if you're looking to remove a WooCommerce element, add uh, a new element, edit uh, an add to cart button label in WooCommerce, then that's a functionality, which means PHP, which means functions.php file of your child theme. Now, what's a child theme? As you can see here in this image, it's an active uh, theme that inherits styles and functionalities from a parent theme. As you can see here on the right, um, it is deactivated. If you go and update the parent, this will not overwrite your styling and your functionality customization that is present in your child theme. Also, a child theme keeps all your customization in one place and ideally has only two files, style.css and functions.php. This means that is easy to backup, very easy to manage, super quick to clone. And of course, if you're troubleshooting, then with one click, you can deactivate the child and reactivate the parent to see if errors are contained within the child team customization. Where should you place your custom CSS and where should you place your custom uh, PHP? You know already the answer to this, which is the child theme, but I also want to take a look at what other options we have. Now, you can of course take your theme or take your WooCommerce plugin, open their CSS files and change them directly. Now, this is not and never a great idea. Why? Because next time your theme or WooCommerce plugin release um, a new version, this will completely overwrite what you have done in relation to CSS customization. So uh, definitely never edit core files. Other ways to customize CSS might be in your team control panel if you have one or even a custom CSS plugin. What's the problem here is that CSS is saved onto the database. It's not saved onto any file that you can copy and paste, that you can quickly back up, you can quickly migrate. So definitely your only two choices that actually become then just one is either to use the customizer that comes out of the box within the WordPress sidebar in your admin dashboard, you can just go on to appearance and then select customizer and then you will find the additional CSS window where you can add your custom CSS or my favorite one of course is to edit directly the style.css file of your child theme. But for a moment let me take a step back and take a look at the customizer. As I said, you can access this by going on to Appearance, Customizer, Additional CSS. Here you can enter your code. In this example, I am customizing the color of my Add to Cart buttons into red. As you can see, you can immediately see a change onto a preview of your live site. So this is very handy. You can even switch between desktop, laptop, 
uh, excuse me, tablet and phone and give you, of course, responsive views based on the custom code that you are uh, writing. What's the problem with the customizer? The problems are actually two. One is that this coding window is very small. And once you start filling it up with CSS, you will understand what I mean. And second is that once again, this CSS goes into the database, is stored into the database, is not visible under any files. You need CSS to be into files so you can back them up, you can copy and paste, you can move it to a different server, you can do a lot of things once your code is into uh, a style.css file, which brings you, of course, to the WordPress editor. Not only you have the customize button under appearance, but you also have an editor or team editor, depends on your team, um, under the same uh, sidebar uh, element. Of course, in here, you will open directly the style.css of your active uh, team, which should be your child team, of course. In here, you get a lot of error control functionality. So in this case, if you forget a bracket, it'll tell you there are two errors which must be fixed before you can update this file. So it's handy and you can keep everything in one file. However, what's the problem? The problem is that you need to code in this window. You can't see um, the website at the same time. And also you can't take a backup of this. You have to copy and paste and put it somewhere else. So the best really um, way to customize your CSS is by using a file transfer protocol software or FTP like FileZilla. In this way, you can open your server, access your WP content, themes, child theme uh, folder, and in there you should find your style.css and your functions.php file. You can also drag and drop them onto your local uh, computer if you want to take backups. In here, I have style1.css, style2.css, style3, functions1, functions2. You can rename them as you wish and you can keep copies while you are developing. You can then right click on the style.css on the server and click on edit and you will immediately open your text editor and you can change things in there. Now, before we close the CSS section, I want to actually give you some customization rules. When you open your style.css of your child theme, you will have on line one, something that says theme name, name of your child theme, and template name of your parent team. You have to leave those lines there, otherwise you will break your child team. So you always have to place your CSS below those lines. Also, I recommend you comment your CSS changes uh, in this way. So every time you add a typography CSS, you stick it under this comment. Every time you add some CSS that relates to the footer, you stick it under this comment. So you actually uh, can divide your style.css in sections and it's easier for you to find those uh, as you code along. Of course, if you want to see live changes on your website, you have to make sure you disable the cache. Now, to conclude this video, where should you place your custom.php? We already said same for CSS, it's the same for PHP. Never ever edit your theme or your WooCommerce plugin PHP core files. Why? because you will lose that customization. Another strategy to override WooCommerce templates is to create a WooCommerce folder in your child theme. This is for selective um, 
template files, for example, you can copy and paste the cart.php template onto a WooCommerce folder and remove the cart upsells from there. We will see what the problems are with this solution. So the only two choices you have left are whether you should use the code snippets plugin and copy and paste your customization into separate uh, snippets or otherwise use your functions.php file of your child theme. Once again, let's take a step back. We're now in the WP content themes, child theme, WooCommerce subfolder. In this WooCommerce subfolder, as I said, you can take a WooCommerce plugin template, such as the single dash product.php, do the changes in this file, and this WooCommerce folder will override the WooCommerce plugin uh, relevant template file. This is great and easy. However, child themes should not have a WooCommerce folder and should not have template overrides. Why? Because while you keep your template overrides in the child theme, WooCommerce plugin gets updated and usually these template files get updated. This means that you will be using an old version of a template file every time unless you manually go and redo this operation. So take the new template file from WooCommerce, put it into your child theme and re-customize it by hand. You see, this is not handy. You will also get a lot of notification errors in your WooCommerce dashboard. So this is not good. Let's move on to the code snippets plugin. This is handy. It adds a snippets link onto your admin sidebar and you can activate and deactivate with a little toggle your snippets. You can describe them. You can add tags to it. You can even give them priority. And this is handy and all. However, once again, it creates a problem similar to the CSS uh, issues we saw before. This PHP is not stored into a file. It gets stored onto your database. So once again, I'm sure it is secure enough because it has over 100,000 uh, downloads. So it's okay. However, the problem is not security. The problem is um, once you need to migrate your PHP customization to another site, once you need to copy and paste and keep everything in uh, one location, well, this is not handy. This is um, not ideal. So once again, the way to customize PHP, the ideal way is to use FTP and go this time to WP Content Teams name of your child theme and functions.php. Once you edit that file in your uh, text editor, you will see your actual code. You can save and you can then upload the file back to the server. You can take backups and you can do a lot of um, interesting things that you couldn't do otherwise. Now, once again, a little uh, bit of customization rules related to the functions.php. You have to leave the initial PHP call that is there on line one. Never touch that. Always place PHP below it. Also, same as for CSS, remember to comment your PHP changes and best in this case is to comment each snippet that you add to describe what that does and where um, that snippet is um, happening. Also, if your functions.php file ends with this combination of signs, well, 
you can remove them because they only create problems. In this way, when I tell you put snippets at the bottom of your functions.php, you will not have this annoying thing. You never know where you should put them below that or above that. So no worries, uh, just remove that part and move forward. Now, quick recap. Remember, if you want to customize WooCommerce, using a child theme has several benefits, which we saw in this lesson. Also, remember what the difference is between customizing the style and customizing functionality so that you know where your uh, code goes. A child theme can be created in five minutes, really. And when you're looking to customize style.css and functions.php, FTP is your best friend.